at some basics yesterday. I'm going to remind you uh, fairly fast, and I'm going to start with uh, the new stuff. Uh, as far as an exponential uh, format is concerned, we define the following. For example, if you're dealing with square root of a, it's the same as saying a to the power of one half. So 25 to the power of one half is easier if we write it as square root of 25, and therefore the answer is fine. Because we may be unfamiliar with this 25 to the power of one half. So exponential, as far as the uh, rational exponents, refers to radicals and roots. The other thing that was mentioned, whenever the index is odd, you have nothing to worry about. When you have an index which is even, however, what's underneath must be positive. For example, if you have this one, then the answer is not a real solution. And today we're going to discuss that in a uh, maybe in about 30 minutes, that is equal to 5i. I've already given you what i is. We're going to get to that. Now, to make sure we understand roots better, let's quickly uh, look at their graphs, because that was also asked. We are going to spend uh, uh, not a lot of time on graphs of root functions in this course, but you'll come across it in the next course. So let's start with y equals square root of x. If we want to graph it, as far as we are concerned, anything we want to graph, if we pick up enough points, it will do the job. However, later on, uh, we, we will come across what's co called elementary functions, where we must know the general graph. For example, you all remember the quadratic functions on the graphs, something from elementary algebra. I will discuss that in the next chapter. Uh, and you know the general shape, some of you may remember, parabola is the one that, I mean, y equals x squared. The shape is called the parabola that opens up when a is positive. Anybody remembers that? Again, as I said, you know, uh, it's not part of this exam. You don't have to worry about it. But the point being, elementary functions, we should be uh, familiar with. So, how would I graph this? If I don't know anything about this function, all I have to do, just pick up points. And always go with easy points that you don't need a calculator. For example, if x is 0, what is y? OK, if it's 1, if it's 4, if it's 9, if it's 16, and I can continue with easy numbers, right? Perfect squares. Now, can I pick, I don't know, negative 1? No. no, it is not a real number, and we don't graph that. Now, if you plot those points carefully, then the shape looks like this. Do you see that, everybody? This is the general shape. OK? Now, since we discussed the concept of a domain and range, let me see, see if you remember that. The basic definition was domain refers to all possible values of x. And how do you find it if you're looking at the graph? You break it along the x-axis, and you see what it covers, right? So for this case, what do you think the domain is? And again, simple definition, whatever x can be meaning the independent variable, the first variable. What do you think it's going to be? Say it again. Do you see it's 0 to infinity? Right? If you break it along the x-axis, it covers from 0 all the way to infinity, right? Do you see that? Just lay it down along the x-axis. Now, what about the range? Now, lay it down along the 
y-axis. What do you see? Just the positive side, don't you? And that is the basic graph that will help us understand uh, the concept as far as how it looks like, when it's, uh, you know, what is the domain, what is the range. The graph is important because it will help us with everything we need to know about the function. So that's why this is one of those elementary functions you come across again in uh, college algebra. If you know the graph, you don't have to really memorize anything. Put the graph up here, you know the domain, you know the range, you know the x-intercept, you know the y-intercept, you name it. Do you follow what I'm saying? In this case, the x and y-intercept is the same thing, 0, 0, okay? Now, again, quickly the next one that I want you to look at is the following. Y is equal to the cube root of x. Just a quick uh, sketch. Okay, everybody, x is 0. What is y? 0. Okay. How about 1? 1. Okay. How about 8? 2. How about 27? 3. Okay. That wasn't a big deal, right? And I can pick more numbers, right? How about, can I pick negative 1? Yes. What's the answer? One. What was it? Positive 1? Negative 1. Negative. That's the difference between an odd root and even root. Odd root, positive gives you positive, negative gives you negative, right? So what about negative 8? How about negative 27? And it continues. I can continue with larger and larger numbers on the positive or on the smaller number on the negative side, but I just pick the easy numbers. Does that work? Again, if I carefully graph this, it looks like this. Okay. By no means this is to scale. But the idea is that if you look at this one, y equals cube root of x, what do you think the domain is at this? Infinity to infinity. To negative to positive infinity. What is the range of it? The same thing. And so when it comes to an odd, the graph is important. A picture is worth a thousand words, Confucius, right? And it is true. It tells me everything there is to know about the function. When I see the graph, I know there is no restriction. I know the domain. I know the range. And I know the intercepts. So if you see the question, cube root of negative 1,000. What's the answer, anyway? Negative 10. Negative 10. Okay. So that's something left from yesterday I wanted to discuss. And we're going to take it from here. Is there any question before we continue? All right. We were dealing with roots and uh, anything involving roots, how we simplify it. So let's quickly look at uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fairly fast. Some of them we've already done. So let's look at the simple case of square root of, let's say, uh, AT. If somebody says, simplify this, it simply means if there is a perfect, perfect piece in it, bring it out, if there is a perfect square. Now, if we see it, so be it. Normally, the numbers are not that big. We can handle it. If we don't, we do prime factorization. Is everybody clear? So can we see that this is what? 9 times 2? OK? Now, I normally won't do the uh, uh, you know, intermediate steps that I'm showing you because it's easy to see. But this is equal to that, which gives you 3 squared of 2. Do you have to do all the steps? Not really. You can say simply. This is 9 times 2 and do the job. That's fine with me. But if you're going to make a mistake, don't take a chance. Does that work? All right. So that's simplification of a value. If you happen to have 
multiplication as follows. Let's say square root of 3 times square root of 27 plus 1. We want to multiply them up. You have two choices, class. You can simplify as much as you can and then pursue, or just multiply it and do it at the end. If I don't simplify this one, and I simply say this is what? 3 times 27, and this is square root of 3. Everybody agrees that's the answer so far? Now, I look at the last piece, and I say, OK, square root of 81, the answer is 9. And I'm done. Now, could I have simplified this first? Yeah, in this case, it would have taken a, a longer time. OK? Now, if you are multiplying the following, I have two terms here, two terms here, binomial. I can do foiling. Everybody agrees with that? But do I know a special product? I hope the answer is yes. So does it fit into any pattern? What is that? A plus B, A minus B. Isn't that right? So I'm not going to go with foiling. I'm going to go with A squared minus B squared, and the answer is what? Six minus six. Generally speaking, if I don't see the easy way out, the longer way, I probably make a mistake. Is everybody clear? Or, if I'm doing this, Of course, what does it mean? Square root of x minus 4 times square root of x minus 4. But I'm going to use special product. There's a reason we learned that. OK? And here's what I'm going to do. a squared, do you remember that? Minus 2 times a times b plus b squared. Now, if you skip this step and you trust yourself, I have no quarrel with that. You are more than welcome to do so. But if there is even 1% chance you may make a mistake, you don't want to uh, uh, skip that. Everybody can see a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, right? Go ahead, please. Can you just, um, can you, uh, I'm not finished, by the way. Yeah, yeah, can you, without doing that, can you put um, just what, square root of x minus 4 squared Okay. Uh, Could you do that or not? What is this thing like? Yeah, I, I get that. That's what you started doing, but is that okay? What I'm Absolutely, definitely, positively no. If that is equal to this, therefore you're going to miss the middle term. How could you say that? No, absolutely not. Because the square root of x is going to be squared. It's a minus b squared. So a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay. Now I'll get to that and I'll show you what works with the answer you have in your mind. This becomes x minus 8 squared of x plus 16. You see that? But here's what you had in your mind. Can you give me the answer fast, everybody? One shot. Don't take the intermediate step. What was it? X. You didn't say X squared, right? X. Minus 16. That's what you had in mind. Yeah. It's A minus B, and they're not the same. This is A minus B squared. This is A minus B times A plus B. Two different things. So learn the special product, and more importantly, learn how to apply that. All right. 
Everybody's okay with this stuff so far? Question, go ahead. S squared of 3. I thought you know, that's why I didn't combine it. Yes. 9 plus squared of 3. Thanks. All right. Let me see if there's any question similar to that that was asked. So that's the same thing. All right. Now let's look at uh, division. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up. It's 9 plus squared of 3. Okay, class. Um, That's one example we want to look at. Let me just give it a number. And another number I'm going to look at is actually the one that I'm going to look at that most. Okay. So let's look at those two and so in order that to okay, also. Uh, let's say uh, 2 over square root of x minus 5. All right, we want to see how to, if they say rationalize the denominator or divide or simplify, it has the same meaning. So if you have a fraction where the denominator involves a radical, it's not good, you have to get rid of it. Is everybody with me? So how do you get rid of square root of 2? So everybody agrees that this is nothing but 1. So that's OK, right? So what happens is that the top is simply 7 square root of 2. What about the bottom? Two. You don't have to write square root of 4 and then bring it up. OK? Does that make sense? Now, here's unfortunately a common mistake. Some people are not too sure what happens here. If you go back to this one, take a look at the root, everybody. What is the root here? When we don't write the root or the index is 2. Everybody agrees with that? So what do I have here? I have exponent 1, don't I? Again, we don't write those. What do we want to happen? We want 2 to come out in order to do so. We need exponent to be equal to the index. So I need 2 to the power of 1. Does that make sense? Now I want to do the same thing here. In other words, I know the result is supposed to be x. Do you follow what I'm saying? It's supposed to come up. So I need what? Y. Because now you have x to the power of 5 and it comes up. Now, how do you get that? A very simple question. What is 5 minus 2? You're done. So you put the same thing at top. Got it? So 15, the fifth root of x cubed over x is done. Now, there was a question similar to that that I'm going to put up before I go to the next one. Here's the question that was asked. I'll come back to the third one, OK, class? OK, we have the square root of 27 x cubed y cube over the cube root of 3xy. Actually, that's a different one simplified. OK, that's one question. I actually need to do this one. The third root, I'm sorry, of 5 x to the power of 10 over 4w. Okay. We want to do this one. The next one I'll be looking at the end if you want. Uh, first, let's uh, make up two radicals. OK.
Now, first of all, everybody understands the reason being is that we can do this, right? We can go back and forth as long as we don't have a negative and we don't have an even index. Is everybody clear? Because if you have an in even index, it's a different story. So we go from here to here, no problem, right? All right. We can even simplify a little bit further in order to make sure everybody can see. Do you see what comes out? If you, for now, ignore that. Look at the top. Anything comes out? So what do you think I should write down? Then I will like, exit. So what should I? X cubed. X cubed. Cube root of what? 5x. Five. Five Let's see why. Remember what I told you yesterday. 5 remains. But look at this one. You divide this by the what? Index. Index. What's the answer? Index. What is the remainder? I don't write, I just, I wrote it so you can see why, but I'm going to erase it in a second. The quotient becomes the exponent of the piece that comes out, and the remainder becomes the exponent of the piece that stays in. Is that making sense to everybody? All right. Let's just erase that. And... In order to make sure, let me ask you what you need for the denominator, then I'm, I'm going to make a slight change. What do you think for, do you, need, you need for the denominator to be um, rationalized or simplified? Very good. So I'm going to rewrite this so everybody can see what's going on. I'm going to rewrite this as 2 squared w rather than keeping it as 4. Is everybody with me? So because if I don't see that, I may think that I need 4 squared, right? But since I see that, all I need is what? Let me use it. What do I need? I need the cube root of what? 2 squared is 2. 2 what? And everybody can see that the denominator becomes what? 2w. Is that right? Q root is gone. Now what is left? x cubed, the cube root of 5 times 2, 10, x times w squared. Yes? How does that turn into that? The top? The bottom, 2 squared w, how does that turn into 2w squared? OK. Let's put them together. What is that? Cube root of what? 2 cubed w cubed, right? Or 8 w cubed. I highly recommend you write 2 cubed instead of 8. So 2 comes out, w comes out. Why? because the exponent is identical to the index. When you divide it, you get 1. Everybody can see this is 2w. You okay with that? Go ahead, please. Can we just um, multiply the first equation, the denominator and the numerator by uh, Q root 4w squared? Yeah, you can do that. OK, he says, can we multiply class? Can we multiply by the cube root of 4w squared? And the answer is yes, you can. And if the answer will be the same. 4w comes out, OK? And then you will have, when the 4w comes out, OK, which is 16 in that case, right? If you do that, what is this? 16w squared, isn't it? Everybody agrees with that? I want to answer your question so you understand what happens with that. When you take it up, the 16 is 8 times 2, which is 2 cubed times 2. The 2's cancel out. However, you have done maybe 2 or 3 extra steps. And I don't want to really go over that because it can confuse somebody. If you want, I can show you. But if you try that, 
you are not finished with the top. Okay? Is that working for everybody? Everybody understand that? How many people honestly understood the question and the answer? Okay. Wow. I'm gonna then I'm gonna quickly show you. Everybody understood what we did here? Yes. I'm still kind of lost from the purple to the blue. Like far as why you took the two squared and turned into the two W squared. No. Okay. This is cube root of four W. In order for you to bring it out, you want everything to have an exponent three, right? Four is two with exponent two. Okay. W is having exponent one. So two has exponent two, so I need two with exponent one. And W has exponent two. Do you see if you keep it under the need? See, when you <coughs> multiply the two, you don't even have to write this. You need to understand that two W comes out. But if you put it together, do you see two squared and two gives you two cubed or eight W cubed? Do you see that? Oh yeah, I got that, but I, yeah. I thought you just had that as, I have no clue. So, <laughs> is that just an extra step right there? This one? Did? Yeah. Which one is this one? So you, you didn't yeah, this one I don't. I, somebody asked and I explained it. You don't have to write that. Okay. Do you see when you multiply these two, the answer is to the yeah, That's that. all. Now, okay. don't go the extra step. Uh, I'm going to put up the thing that he asked. Okay? I just want to make sure that you understand that it is doable, but it will take extra step. And here's what he said if we have this one, Can we multiply make sure it's in a parenthesis? Why this? Is there, that was your question, right? Yes, you can. And what happens is that I want you to understand 4W comes out here. Yes? Everybody understands what he's asking? Now, what happens to the top? The top becomes, OK, first of all, 5x, then we have simplified that one, right? This was x, we ended up with what? x cubed, right? Do you remember that? This one is x cubed, cube root of 5x. Do you remember that? Yes. OK. Times what? cube root of 16 W squared. Do you see that one? Wait, can you just, um, yeah. instead of simplifying the x, the first problem, can't you just multiply through? It'll be 20 x 10 W squared. 20, where do you get the 20? 4 squared, so 4 times 5. No, 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 it's 4 squared. It's not 4, it's 4 squared. Why does it, the square have to hide the 4 too? Because we have it here. Okay? And if you have it, it becomes 16. And the 16 is what? 8 times 2, right? Isn't 16 8 times 2, everybody? Yeah. 8 times 2. 8 comes out as 2, okay? And it drops with the 4. And the 2 remains inside. In other words, I want you to understand what happens to this piece. This piece becomes 2 cube root of what? 2 w squared. Do you see that? Look at this piece and this piece only. Mm -hmm. So that's why you don't want to take the long way. It is more confusing. But nevertheless, if you're consistent, you come up with the same answer. And when you get here, do you see these two and these four cancel each other and they give us the two back? And do you see the product is the same thing as we got here? Okay, uh, let's move on to the next because I don't want to, you know, do it on it too, too much. Uh, yes, you can do it this way, but if you do it this way, make sure you continue all the way down to simplify completely because a fraction must be completely simplified. Okay, so I highly recommend you write this 
and then work on it to get this one, which is just one or two steps. Okay? All right. Let's finish all the important stuff, and there's one question that we look at. All right. Um, we were looking at uh, the third one, I said. One minute for that one. Uh, how do we simplify radicals when uh, they are in the denominator, but in the form of two terms? You have to multiply by what? Conjugate. Now, first of all, class, what is the conjugate of A plus B? A minus B. Okay? So what is the conjugate of square root of X minus 5? So when you do that, class, let me just quickly write the top. You're not supposed to FOIL it. You're supposed to know your special product so you have the answer in front of you. What is the product of these two? And if you don't see the easy way out, you probably make a mistake. Make sure you know your special product, which is, of course, special factoring as well, if you remember back and forth. Does that work for everybody? We do the same thing when we do complex numbers, OK, when we want to simplify it. You'll see it in a second. All right. The next topic I want to look at in this area is to look at equations involving radicals, OK? And then we go to um, complex numbers. Everybody's okay with this example, right? Anybody want to see one more? This is good enough, right? All right, let's go to some simple equations involving it. You want to solve this. Remember when we did Absolute value equations, what was the first step? Isolate. Or inequality for that matter? Isolate. Isolate. So what is our first step? Six. Isolate. That means get the radical by itself. What's your next step? You got a square. Why? Because it's a square root. Are you with me? If it was a cube root, then you would make it to the third power. And x minus 4 becomes what? So what is x? 40. Now, are we done? Check. We check. 40 minus 4? 36. Square root of that minus 6 is 0. Zero. Simple, right? All right. Let's look at the next couple of examples. Step one, Isolate. what do you get? Next, so x becomes what? Negative eight. Are we done? No, check. check. What is the cube root of negative eight? Plus seven. That works. All right. By the way, as I mentioned before, when we did absolute value inequalities. Whenever you check, you only check with the original equation, OK? So now, what do we do? What does it give us? 
Next, square. Square. Right? So what do we get? Left side. 2x minus 2. Right side, A minus B squared. That's the gender uh, uh, formula, which is? X squared minus 6x plus, plus nine. 9. Now I'm going to put everything to one side. What do I get? X2. X squared, what? Minus 8x. Minus 8x? Plus 12. Plus 12. So what do we have? X minus 4, it's minus 4. Minus 4 and what? No, wait, I lied. Mm -hmm. I lied. X minus 6. X minus 6, X minus Okay, that's better. You want two numbers, the product is C, which is 12. The sum is B, which is negative 8. And therefore, X is what? Are we done? No. 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 Let's check. How do we check original equations? Always, whatever was given. Here's the original equation. So 2x minus 3 plus 3, is it equal to 6? That's the question we don't know, right? <coughs> so what is this? Twelve minus three square root of nine is three, and that adds up. So we're done with the first piece. So we're okay. How about two? Let's put it in there. Two times two, four minus three plus three is equal to two. So this is one plus three is equal to two. Four is not equal to two, is it? So I want to see this one, I want to see this one, and I want to see the solution. Then I want to see that you cross it out, and that's good enough for me. The name is, this is an extraneous solution. X equals 2 is not a solution. It's an extraneous solution that we came up with during the process of squaring. Are you with me? So you check both with only the original equation. Does that work? All right. Uh, before we go to complex numbers, uh, there was a, a question regarding radicals when we have two of them. So let me see. Square root of 5x minus 1 minus square root of 3x minus 2 equals 1. In order to solve this, you have to isolate the red. But there are two of them, so you can't. Then what do you do? The best way is to put one on each side. So that's the original one. We are going to 5x minus 1 on the radical because 3x minus 2 plus 1. So I can't isolate it by itself. I have to do, I have to put 1 on each side. What do I do next? Square. Now I'm going to square it. And everybody can see this is 5x minus 1. Now what is this? A plus B squared, right? What is A squared? This is A squared plus. Just take it out. Plus 2 times A times B. Right, class? plus b squared. So I hope you realize when we know special products, it's going to go very fast, and we really can't afford not to. Sounds good? All right, let's continue. Uh, 
And let's simplify by bringing this stuff to the left, okay? So this is 3x uh, minus 1, right? So this becomes what? Minus 3x and plus 1, right? So what do you have? We have 2x is equal to 2 square root of 3x minus 2. Is that right, everybody? Now what do you do? You can square the side again, but you can see that the two drops, that would be a better choice. If you don't do that, it makes no difference, class. Okay? It makes no difference. So if you see a common factor, just drop it. Does that work? Now what do you do? Square it. So this becomes x squared. 3x minus 2. Bring them to the same side. The answer is, let's just put it here, x1. So x is what? 1 and 2. Are we done? Mm -hmm. We're going to check. So 5 times 1 minus 1 under the radical minus 3 times 1 minus 2 under the radical is equal to 1. This is 4 becomes 2 minus 1 equals 1. So that one checks. Is that right? Now I'm going to put number 2 in here. 5 times, so I, this is a question mark because we don't know. 5 times 2 minus 1 under the radical minus 3 times 2 minus 2. Is that equal to 1? So this is 9 comes out as 3, uh, 2, 1. Both answers are acceptable. They both work. Go ahead. Over here. So what is your A square root of 3x minus 2? What is your B? 1. Just A plus B quantity. It goes a lot faster, class. Mm -hmm. I can't emphasize this enough. When we know special products and when we use it, it makes a huge difference. So we don't learn the special product just for the sake of that section and then we forget it. We actually, we actually apply it. Okay? Now, let's go to... Um, Complex numbers. I believe we covered everything that we wanted. Let's look at complex numbers. The first thing I want to uh, explain is the following. When we look at a set of numbers class, so just to refresh everyone's memory quickly, we have the set of natural numbers. One, two, three, two, infinity. Do you remember that? I'm going to go over this very quick. Also known as counting numbers. Also known as positive integers. Whole numbers is the same thing as a zero. Do you remember that? Right? Integers. The same thing, also go to the negative side, right? So if you're dealing with integers, if they give you a number which is, let's say, I don't know, 2 thirds, for example, or square root of 2, it's not an integer. Okay? And the concept of consecutive integers, uh, consecutive even integers, consecutive odd integers, 
it makes perfect sense. Now we have a set of number known as rational numbers. Normally we use Q. Rational numbers. Okay. If you remember, I discussed that the other day when I went over uh, rational uh, equations and expressions. Rational numbers are in the form of a fraction where the two, this is P and Q are, this is an element of So for example, two-thirds. All of these numbers, by the way, they're also considered rational numbers. Or if I give you 7.1, you say 7 and 1 10, and that's a proof. Okay? But if I give you square root of 2, it doesn't work. Or pi, it doesn't work. Those are examples of irrational numbers. Now, when a decimal ends, it's a terminating decimal. When the, when the decimal is a repeating decimal, example, 0 0.3 bar, everybody knows is one third, right? Those are rational numbers. But if you have a decimal that is neither terminating nor repeating, example, pi is what? 3.14159, and it continues indefinitely. Those are examples of rational numbers. So they use H. The way they define it was as a set builder, if you will. X such that X is not a rational number. Again, this is refreshing your memory as far as the basic is concerned. Now add to that the following concept. Q intersection H is an empty set. Q union H is the set of real numbers. Let me make sure everybody understands what we are referring to. Let me just put it up here. If a number is rational, it can't be rational. So what's in common? There is nothing in common. A number is either or. It can't be both, right? So the set of rational numbers, the set of irrational numbers, they have nothing in common. So their intersection is an empty set. We talked about intersection and union when we talked about inequalities and so forth and inter. When we put them together, the set of rational numbers and the set of rational numbers in the form of a union, we come up with this set of numbers co called the set of real numbers. Is everybody with me? Now we add to it a set of number called complex numbers in the form of A plus BI A and B are any number, any real number, and i by definition is the square root of negative one. This is the definition of a complex number. So now, we introduce a new set of number called complex number, and in the case of complex numbers, the general format is a plus b i. What is a, what is b? Those are real numbers. What is i? i is equal to square root of negative 1 by definition. And there are uh, applications like in electronics and so on. So, and it's very simple when you want to uh, work with it. Okay? So for example, if I said 5 plus 3i, if I ask you what is a, what's the answer? What is b? Not a big deal, right? So if I want to add two numbers, let's say I want to add this to 7 minus 8i. If I want to add it, just ignore the fact that i is equal to square root of negative 1. 
Just imagine you're adding up like terms. Are you with me? So add them up. What do you get? 12. 12. 12 negative 5. I. Everybody knows what happened here? 5 and 7, 3i and negative 8i. Very simple when you add or subtract. Does that work? So what we want to discuss is uh, multiplication and division. To do so, we need to know the following class. I, by definition, is squared of negative 1, right class? So if you square it, it becomes negative 1. What is I cubed? I cubed, you can write I squared times I, right? What is I squared? Do you see why it becomes negative I? I to the power of 4. You can say I squared to the power of 2, which gives you what? And we must know this. So let's quickly go over there and then powers of I and how easy we can simplify to one of those. So, I by definition is squared of negative 1. I squared is negative 1, which is a real number. I cubed is negative I, and I to the power of 4 is 1. Now, if you're looking at powers of I, I'm going to show you how to simplify. For example, if somebody says, OK, what is i to the power of um, 1 or 2? OK? Here's the easiest way. And by the way, this is not the only way, but this is the fastest way. All you have to do, look at the exponent class, 1 or 2. Everybody knows to the power of 4 is 1, isn't it? Divided by 4, what do you get? Twenty-five rem remainder two, right? So just keep the remainder. It's equal to i squared. Why? Why is that? Because it's i squared. I'm sorry, i to the power of four to the power of twenty-five times i squared. What is i to the power of 4? 1. What is 1 to the power of 25? Yeah. 1. So the answer is i squared. Now, what is i squared? We are supposed to know it's okay. negative 1, not positive. Is everybody OK with that? So what's the fastest way? Divide by 4. Just keep the remainder. OK? Simple example. i to the power of 7 is the same as i cubed. Do you see why? Because when you divide 7 by 4, the remainder is 3, right? So what is i cubed? Negative 1. Is everybody OK with that? So how do you simplify powers of i? Divide by 4, keep the remainder. That would be the fastest way. Go ahead. Only 4? Only 4. But do you, do you see? I mean, there are other ways I'm not going to cover it. But this is the fastest way. Fastest way, why 4? Because i to the power of 4 is 1. Is everybody clear on that? So quickly, what is i to the power of 200, everybody? OK. <coughs> 1. Why is it 1? Because there is a 0 remainder, isn't it? Is everybody clear on that? So divide by 4 and keep the remainder. So if I said i to the power of, I don't know, uh, 2,000, you say, I'm going to divide 2,000 by 4, and the remainder is 0. So I know the answer is 1. I'm done. Does that work for everybody? Okay. Now, when we work with uh, complex numbers, we have to know that if a negative 
number is given under the radical, we have to change it before we multiply. Otherwise, it doesn't work. In other words, let me look at this simple example. Uh, first of all, if you want to go 5i times 3 plus, I don't know, 7i. Uh, first, let's look at this one. You just multiply them out. This gives you what? 15i plus 35i squared. Everybody agrees with that? Not a big deal, right? I mean, assume it's x, right? However, I'm not finished because when it comes to powers of i, I have to change it accordingly. Therefore, it's 15i minus, minus 35. So the way you multiply, just the way you do it always. All right? So, of course, I'm going to rewrite this as negative 35 plus 15i because I want to know what's a and what's b. I mean, you don't have to change it if you know what's a and b. If it's going to be confusing, you don't want to take a chance. So a is negative 35 and b is 15. Now, if this is A, right? This is B, right? Plus, if A is 0, for example, let's say the following. Uh, minus 4i. Do you see that A is 0 and B is negative 4? Yes or no? In this case, it's purely imaginary. However, if the number is, let's say, uh, 2, that is the same as 2 plus 0i. By the way, this is 0 minus 4i, right? In which case, a is 2 and b is 0. So when a is 0, purely imaginary. When b is 0, purely real number. Does that make sense to everybody? So a plus bi, sometimes a is 0, sometimes b, b is sometimes none of them. If one of them is zero, it refers to a specific type. And this type is imaginary, and this type is a real. Now, what I want to add to this multiplication is the following. Class, what is the conjugate for A plus B? A what is the conjugate for A plus B I? And that one is called complex conjugate. Is everybody clear? That's the terminology. Complex conjugate. Now, what was A plus B times A minus B? The product was A squared minus B squared, right? Now in this case, minus b i squared. Does that work? Is everything clear? I'm using the special product. So this becomes a squared minus b squared i squared. Is that right? Which is what? A so from now on, we can use that. So one more time. a plus b, a minus b is a squared minus b squared, the product. But a plus b i times a minus b i is a squared plus b squared. All right? So if I have given the formula, and I'm asked to simplify this one versus, let's say, this one. Now this one, all I have to do is just multiply by i over i. Are you with me? Or for that matter, negative i over negative i. Probably that's a better one, but I don't want to confuse you because there is no complex conjugate here. But negative i over negative i would be very interesting. But doesn't matter. 7i over what? i squared. Now what is i squared? And you don't leave it like that, right? If you had multiplied by negative i, you would have come up with this answer in one shot. Any questions up to here? So if they said simplify, divide, or put it in standard form, what is the standard form? A plus bi, this is what you do. In this case, everybody, 
What is A, what is B? A is zero, and B? Negative seven I. No, negative seven. Negative seven, no, 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 no. Class, this is the same as zero minus seven I. Just a is equal to zero, B is negative seven. That's the negative seven, okay? So they might say, what is the real part? They mean A. What is the imaginary part? They mean B. Everybody is okay with that? Let's simplify or divide or rationalize or put it in standard form. That has the same meaning. How do you do that? First of all, this is nothing but one. So we are okay with that, right? Three. I'm sorry, what, uh, three. What, 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 yeah, three. No, I was looking at five at all. Okay, three. And do you see the denominator becomes three squared plus two squared? And the top becomes what? Five times three minus two i. And so, this is what, nine, this is what, four. Now, if you left it as that, it's okay as long as you understand what's A and B, okay? If you have any doubts, you really have to change it. So let me ask you, what is A, what is B, do you know? 15 is A. 15 is A? Anybody else? Oh. Who wants to be a millionaire? Anybody 13 else? 13 over 13. Say it again? 13 over 13. Do you see that 5 times 3 is 15? 5 times 3 is 10? And so this is your A, this is your B. So it's important to rewrite it, perhaps, if you're going to make a mistake. But sometimes they ask you what is A and what is B. Sounds good? Um, and I'm going to do uh, one more question that was asked just for practice. But for all practical purposes, we covered everything. Go ahead. Um, why do you have to multiply by the conjugate? Why do you multiply by the conjugate? Because in order for you to put it in standard form A plus BI, the denominator must be a real number. And in order to make it a real number, when you multiply by a complex conjugate, Look at the result. A squared plus B squared, which is a real number. Do you see that? Is everybody okay with the question and the answer? Go ahead, please. So the problem says simplify the conjugation. If they said, in the case of a complex number, if they give you this question and they say simplify, or divide, or put it in standard form, or rationalize, they all mean the same thing. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to you have to multiply by the conjugate if it were like three plus square root of two. And you have to multiply by complex conjugate when it's like three plus two i. Does that work? I want to do one more question of this form, making sure we are following that. And here's the question. Okay. So what should we do? Okay. Multiply by the conjugate. complex conjugate of the denominator. What is the complex conjugate the way it's given? Do you see that? So I'm going to look at the denominator first. Do you see the denominator is a squared plus b? squared and b is 1. Do you see that? If by any chance you look at negative 1, it works the same way. But it is important to put it in a parenthesis if you do that. So that's the denominator we're going to simplify. But what about the top? Now we are going to FOIL. All right? So to FOIL, I'm going to multiply the 3 and I get minus 6 minus 3i. Is that right? Everybody? 
Then we're going to multiply with 3i. So what do we get? Minus 6i. Minus 6i and minus 3i squared. I highly recommend you just write it the way it is and then change it accordingly. All right. First of all, this is what? The positive three. Positive three. So negative six and positive three is negative three, right class? Minus nine i. And this one is what? Four. And this is one. So it's five, yes? So again, if you left it as that, I'm okay with that as long as you know what's a and b. What's a? So Probably it's a better idea to rewrite it as follows. A is negative 3 fifths and B is negative 9 fifths. Sounds good? I want to look at the last uh, concept and that would be it. And here's here's what I want to catch. Class, remember this one? You remember that? That only works for real numbers. So let me give you a simple example so you see. If I have minus four on the variable and minus nine, this is not equal to this is not equal to that. Why not? Because this is what? 2i. 4 comes out as 2. Square root of negative 1 is i. Is everybody clear? This comes out as what? Three. So the answer is 6i squared, which is what? So anytime you see a negative, take it out under the radical. Okay. If it happened to be an odd index, it really makes no difference. But still, it's a good practice to take it out. Sounds good? Any questions? Do you always conjugate um, stuff on radicals? Yes. If you have radicals, you use the, you know, for example, you know, I, I'm not gonna, if you're looking at 5 over, let's say, square root of 2 minus square root of 3, right? How do you simplify this? You say, OK, let me multiply by. It's conjugate. What is the conjugate of the denominator? And it becomes 5 times square root of 2 plus square root of 3 over what? 2 minus 3. This is a conjugate. The other one is complex conjugate. And 2 minus 3 gives you negative 1. So you rewrite this as negative 5 times square root of 2 plus square root of 2 as the final answer. Sounds good? Yes? If, um, if a number was negative, that's, that's rooted, the square root of a number that's negative. Okay. You're, okay. Let's look at that. Are you talking, let me just make sure. Like so you're square saying square root of negative 5, negative five is square root of 5i. Now, notice, I want you to put enough space between the two to understand i doesn't belong to the red. So you can put it in front of us. Now, speaking of that, class, um, many texts, they do that, but I personally like to put the coefficient, the number in front. It doesn't matter. In fact, if you happen to have, let's say this one, many times you see it as such, 2i squared of 3. Are you with me? So 2 squared of 3i or 2i squared of 3 has the same meaning. But, but it's up to you. I would rather put the coefficient completely in front. Sounds good? Anything else? Have fun class. <laughs>